welcome to uh, Minneapolis St. Paul uh, International Airport. Today I'm flying um, to Amsterdam on a Delta 767-400. I think this is actually my plane to Amsterdam. 767-400. This is kind of mini museum on wildlife. Just thought I'd show this to you. It's really tiny. It's just it's just this little thing. It's kind of cool. This is actually really cool. This is a collection of property seized by the United States Fish and Wildlife Service um, because there's a lot of federal laws prohibiting people from you know, bringing invasive species and, and parts of endangered species to the United States. So for instance, here's um, you know, Burmese python handbag, elephant hair necklace. So you know, especially in a place like Minnesota and you know, Minneapolis where we're at right now, they don't want people you know, taking, releasing um, you know, invasive species into the lakes because that really decimates you know, the natural population. So that's definitely really cool. Here's a whole turtle that they see. So, all right, so we're at the uh, Delta Sky Club. So let's go check it out. Um, I'm gonna act surprised when they ask for my ticket. I'm flying. Is it okay if I film here? Or is it okay if I film here? Like uh, I'm doing like a review? A review? Like, like what kind of? Like a airplane review. Like Delta oh, No. Oh really? I can't film inside here? Um, yeah. So I can do it? Yes, you can. Oh, because I was surprised, you know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. And we will make announcement for Bodyguard. Right, so here's the lounge. The Delta Sky Club was jammed to say the least. And while this was a busy time and day, being that Minneapolis is a Delta hub, I anticipated a more spacious layout. While I explore the lounge, I would like to discuss airline Wi-Fi and cellular technology and how it relates to Delta's fleet. Almost all of Delta's 877 aircraft fleet are equipped with one of four types of Wi-Fi, the newest being Viasat's KA followed by GoGo's 2KU and KU, the latter being the system on my flight. The aforementioned trio are satellite-based systems using onboard routers linked with one or more overhead antennas to uplink and downlink with satellites which do the same with ground stations connected to the internet. Delta Connection aircraft and mainline 717s are equipped with GoGo's ATG4, ATG being short for air to ground. This system uses four belly and side-mounted antennas through which two onboard modems communicate with a network of 250 essentially sky-facing cell towers across the US. All of these communications are made possible using electromagnetic waves in the heavily regulated RF or radio frequency portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. It starts with a perfectly shaped sine wave of constant frequency and amplitude, amplitude being the height of the wave peaks and frequency being measured in hertz or cycles per second. Frequency measures the number of peaks that pass through a point during a second or given time period. So an electromagnetic wave with small wavelengths or peaks compressed together will have a high frequency since many wave peaks pass by at a given time. Now this carrier wave's frequency and or amplitude is constantly modulated to encode or impress data onto the outgoing wave like a song. A receiver like a radio or the modem on board a plane decodes the data in these radio waves by contrasting the current amplitude and or frequency of the incoming wave with the amplitude and or frequency of the carrier wave, or rather what the receiver would have picked up had the carrier wave not undergone any modulation. It is important to note that many modern electromagnetic waves undergo both amplitude and phase, or for these purposes, frequency modulation, allowing the wave to contain two sets of information or differences from the unmodulated carrier wave by which the receiver can decode using a constellation.
Alright, so we're boarding right now. Uh, it's kind of a mess at the um, gate. Hi. What number? Uh, 8D, I think. 8D, yeah. Okay, other side, make a left. Alright, thank you. my seat right here. What are you guys' names, first of all? Right? I'm Mike. I'm, I'm Max. Nice, nice to meet you guys. Max. I'm Brett. Brett. I'm Brett. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What do you guys think? You know, I know they're replacing like the 767 300s and they're like dropping like flies. So like, what do you think they're going to do, like replace them with? I mean, I know the A330 900 NEOs are like a little bit large for that. Yeah. So what do you think? Right now, I don't know what Delta's plan is on getting down with 7600. 76s. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough to say. It's awesome. Yeah, a lot of other carriers have the 787. Yeah, yeah. 787. But yeah, I know uh, they did. I know Northwest ordered some, but they never um, bought any. Yeah, and Delta hasn't bought them, so yeah, I don't know what the answer is going to be. So when you um like when you fly over the Atlantic, like I know like when it's flying, you know like over the ground, you use like ADSB. So like, how do you like communicate? I mean, like I know you have like satellite communications with the airline, but like how do you talk to like tower and everything? So we do what's called CPDLC. Yeah, how does that work? So that's how we communicate with, with uh, over the water, but then we also have HF high frequency uh, radio that we, uh, that we talk to them on, and then we get what we call a cell call check, yeah. where they can call us and we get a loud ding and a uh, visual notification. Yeah. If they need but to talk to us by voice. That's so cool, yeah. yeah. And so do you guys use like VORs? I mean, I asked this to the last 737. Do you guys use GPS? I'm assuming GPS. Yeah, we definitely use GPS yeah. as our primary, but of course. you can use VORs, backup, and everything. Yeah. And I know there's like, I know like they're retiring the 767-300s by 2025. Is there a retirement date for the, uh, or when do you think they're going to retire the 767-400s? No idea. Yeah. You definitely don't have to answer this if this is personal or whatever, but I know I know Delta recently, you know, dropped or made optional the requirement to like go to college for pilots. What do you What do you think about that? Yeah, we're hiring. Really, I'm, I'm kind of. The other day, I mean, it's like what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of indifferent to it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, I flew with guys in the military that, yeah, you know, course. I actually flew with a guy that... <laughs> you were in the military? Four year degree, yep. Thank you for your service. Uh, thank you, man. Appreciate it. What, do you, what did you all fly, by the way? Uh, F-15s. F-15s. Yeah. Appreciate your time. Nice. And, you know, yeah. That's sick. And so I flew with a guy that didn't have his degree. Uh, yeah. And no uh, issue, so... Yeah. To me, it's like, about the, the flight training. It's not of course. Necessarily the, the I get that. Not, yeah. Because I mean, you can you can have a liberal arts degree. Of course. Still fly, or you can have an engineering yeah. degree. Yeah. And still can fly. So yeah. I mean, really. So there's already a huge disparity, is what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Definitely. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, thank you. Yeah. No problem, man. Yeah. So here's the uh, Delta One cabin. So it's very spacious, as you can see. This is my bag right here, but goes all the way back is the uh, very large screen that's that's my arm for size kind of and um you get headphones and um here's where you control the seat very cool and here's outlets and a usb port two usb ports see one usb port and um here's the amenity kit that they give you quite cool and here's the um you know bedding they already just give you it right away but we've even left and um, so that's basically the exterior, but you have a lot of privacy right here, so. Down of those engines. My name is Richard Moody. I've been playing about 42 years. What, what gets me going when yeah. I come to work? I think most importantly, my layover. Yeah. The length of my little country I'm going to go to, and the crew of members and friends I'm going to fly with. That's super cool, yeah. So like how long is usually like the crew layover for like a long haul flight? Normally like this? for a long haul, about 24 hours. 24 hours? So you get to you get to spend the night in Amsterdam? This particular trip, we're there for three nights. Oh really, so that's we'll nice. So right. loved ones and that's friends great. and spouses and yeah. nieces. So like in a plane like this size, like let's say an eight hour flight, which it like typically does, like do you get to sleep on the flight or do you work the entire time? No, with a crew, with a big flight, we split the crew in half yeah. and then we have breaks. Okay, that's and great. And on this yeah. particular plane, the breaks are in the back, downstairs. Yep. Oh, there's a downstairs component. Yes. So is there like an elevator, is there a stairway? No, like the stairway and you, stairway. for safety we walk backwards. That makes sense. Is being, you know, like a flight attendant the same across the different aircraft? Or do you need to like learn how to, you know, serve on each one? The service is pretty standard on each one of the aircraft, particularly yeah. um, the bigger flights. But then like today we're, we're missing some components to yeah. get sure. Delta One customer service. So as adults and professionals, we're going to be doing some improvising. Yeah. But most of the time it's standard when we get new flights where uh, this one hasn't been loaded properly. Yeah. So with a service and a smile, we're going to make it happen. So you're saying like they didn't give you the proper tools, but you're going to try your best? The proper tools because yeah. we're friendly and good professionals, we're going to make it work. Do you miss the uh, 777 or? Well, I'm from the Northwest Orient side, so we came with the 747. Oh, you're originally Northwest. Northwest Was it? Yeah. Okay. That's how senior I am. That's started. a long, long time ago. The three of us. Yeah. Yeah. So is that like your uh, favorite plane, the 747-400? It was. Yes. Yeah. When you flew on Northwest, what, what would you say was like the biggest difference, like between the, Delta and Northwest? Yeah. Different mentality. I think our cultures are completely different. From the Northwest side yeah. to the Delta side, I think our cultures are different. Yeah. I read a, a book about Delta once. There was a guy, you know, this was like 30 years ago, and he flew on an L-1011. He flew on like for 48 hours. He stayed on the same plane, and you know, he followed like the cabin crew. He followed the pilots and everything. And it was really like a fascinating, you know, you know, you know, like story, you know, because Delta. I mean, I don't know if you knew, but like I started as like a farming crop testing operation. I mean, Delta and, yeah. is because Delta is because they took on, you know, National. They've taken on yeah. Pan Am and 
Western That's crazy. Merge and blend it with us. Yeah. So different cultures and also the Northwest Hawaiian side became a union. Yeah. And Delta is one of the only That's that not, not a union. That's not a union. Other than the pilots and 68 dispatch. That's a huge deal. I mean, like it's probably different. But I, I think like like Target, I think like Starbucks, I think yeah. those things may change. What would you say was like that difference between Northwest and Delta, if you feel you know comfortable talking about it? What do I think the difference is? Yeah. I think everyone's about customer service. I think everyone's about growth. Yeah. And sustainability. I think, I think we're fine. I think it's gonna work. Yeah. I think for us, I'm starting to retire in a couple of years. Oh really? Yeah. It's been a good career for all of us. Mm -hmm. Delta's Northwest and Astro Pan Am. And it's really, we're here for the adventures and the relationships. Yep. And anyways, um, thank you so much, Mr. Welcome, Moody. Max. Thank you. Thank, right. you. thank you. Thank you, guys. Welcome. All right, so dinner is served. I'm here with the Adiros, by the way. Candy nuts. Now as a final analogy, imagine an electromagnetic wave as a bunch of cars driving in front of the other on a lane, all traveling the speed of light as all electromagnetic waves do. Each car represents the peak of each wave. Now the height of every car would be the amplitude, and the frequency would be the number of cars that reach the exit of the lane in a second. Dependent directly on the distance between the cars are peaks of each wave constituting wavelength, since all cars are moving at the speed of light. Now say I was standing at the end of the lane with a meter stick and a timer. I could determine the height of each car or the amplitude of the wave and record the number of cars that pass by in a second, giving me the frequency of the wave by instantaneously comparing my observations to the constant frequency and amplitude of the carrier wave. I can decode the message of this electromagnetic wave, which says that's it for now, but keep watching to explore these technologies in the 5G rollout. Back to our comparison of radio waves as a bunch of cars traversing a lane, but now instead of frequency being the number of cars that exit the lane per second, it is the position at which they exit the lane. If the car exits right at the center of the lane, the frequency of the wave at that point is higher than the carrier wave. If the car exits left of the center of the wave, the frequency of the wave is below that of the carrier wave. Now if a song is playing on a frequency modulated radio wave, or even an amplitude mod modulated radio wave due to side bands, which I'll leave for another time, cars will be exiting to varying degrees left and right of the center of the lane, representing the fact that the frequency of the radio wave is changing in order to carry the song. Therefore, the lane represents the bandwidth of the electromagnetic wave being broadcasted, a usually tiny gap in the electromagnetic spectrum between the lowest and highest frequencies that the carrier wave will be modulated between, or the lane boundaries that the car will drive between to carry needed information. In the United States, the radio spectrum is controlled by the Federal Communications Commission. This means that in order to buy lanes, or roads consisting of many lanes, representing frequency bandwidths, companies must obtain licenses if such bandwidths aren't already reserved for public or government uses, like the 1,755 to 1,850 megahertz band reserved for military combat systems and federal law enforcement surveillance and robotics. As these roads become congested, 5G offers a solution. With its rollout, the Federal Communications Commission is using multi-billion dollar auctions to license blocks of higher bandwidths in what could be compared to lanes and roads and superhighways far to the right of the lanes I had previously been discussing since their included frequencies are extremely high. Higher frequencies, like cars driving closer together, provide greater data transfer rates but less endurance, often failing to penetrate buildings or rain.
to him. Oh, good Morgan. Uh, on the flight back, I've picked up a bit of a Dutch accent. I've tried to sound uh, authentic with the uh, local people. So, um, with no further ado, I'll tell you that I really enjoyed my flight. It was great. Let's start over. I just flew the 767-400ER. Uh, uh, it was an amazing flight. I was lucky enough to fly one of their aircraft, you know, equipped with the uh, new Delta One business class configuration, which means that you get your own uh, personal suite, which was a truly amazing experience. Um, Delta has 21 of these aircraft in their fleet, but it's a very rare aircraft with only, I believe, 38 made, and the only two airlines that operate it are Delta and United. I'm in Amsterdam Schiphol International Airport. Um, it's the morning, and interestingly, actually, I've already been not only to the Kingdom of the Netherlands, but the municipality of the Netherlands, or the country of the Netherlands. Because, oh, good thing I dropped the Dutch accent. <laughs>